Hey guys, in this video I'm going to explain cookies. A cookie is a small text file that is stored on your computer. It's used to remember information about a user. Data within a cookie is saved in name value pairs. In order to check to see if we have cookies enabled, within console.log I can type navigator.cookie enabled. For me that's true, I have cookies enabled. To add a cookie, we would type document dot cookie. We will set this equal to a string, but the string has certain components. First is a name value pair. I would like to create a cookie to store a user's first name. The name of this pair will be, let's say first name. Set this equal to some value. The value that I will pick is Spongebob. Then end it with a semicolon. Now you can add an expiration date. When the current time is past a certain expiration date, well then this cookie will be deleted. To set an expiration date, set expires equal to, then pick a date. I'll pick Sunday, 1st, January, maybe a date that's really far out, like 2030. At midnight, UTC, then semicolon. We're also able to set a path for this cookie. I'll use the default path, that would be path equals forward slash. Okay, let's take a look at this cookie. Console.log document dot cookie. Even though this appears to be a string, it's actually an object. The expiration date and the path aren't displayed. All that's displayed is the name and the value. You can add more than one cookie. So again, we will type document dot cookie. Let's copy this text, paste it. Last name. Last name equals square pants. Then let's take a look at our cookie again. The cookie property of our document can hold more than one cookie, but to access it, you would just type cookie. To overwrite a cookie, you would just change the value of a name value pair. If I overwrite the first name and the last name, they'll change. This time, let's set first name to Patrick, last name star. There we go, first name Patrick, last name star. If we change the expiration date to a date that is already passed, that will delete this cookie, it'll expire. So maybe the last name expired in the year 2000. That last name portion of my cookie is no longer there. So that's how to expire a cookie. At this point, we're going to create a function to create a cookie instead of doing so manually. Function set cookie. We'll need a few things. A name, because these are in name value pairs. A value and an expiration date, although that's optional. For the third argument, let's name this parameter days to live. As an argument, you'll pass a number of days that you would like this cookie to be set to expire. 365 would be one year. Let's create a date object. Const date equals new date. I will set the time of this date. Date dot set time method. Within the parentheses, we will take date dot get time. This will return the current time in milliseconds, then add the amount of days to live converted to milliseconds. Days to live times 24 hours times 60 minutes times 60 seconds times 1000 for 1000 milliseconds. Our future date is currently in milliseconds. We'll convert that to UTC string. Date to UTC string method, I'll assign this to a variable, let expires equals, and then we'll use some string concatenation. We'll need to set this expires value. So within quotes, expires equals plus our future date converted to a UTC string. Then we can assign our cookie, document.cookie equals, I'll use a template literal, we're inserting our name that we pass in equals our value, add a semicolon to finish the section, then the expires section, expires. Then you could also add a path if you would like. Path equals forward slash, that's the default path. Okay, now let's create some cookies. I will invoke our set cookie function, pass in a name value pair, and the amount of days I would like this cookie active. What about an email address? Email, make up some email address. 
sponge at gmail.com. I would like this cookie to live for 365 days. Then let's display our cookies. Console.log document dot cookie. And here's our cookies. We still have our first name and last name because we never deleted them. But we do have an email now. Email equals sponge at gmail.com. How can we delete a cookie? All we have to do is set the expiration date to a past date. Here's one easy way to do that. Let's create function delete cookie. All we'll need is a name. What we'll do is invoke set cookie, pass our name as an argument, null for the value, and null for the days to live. If I was to invoke the delete cookie method and pass in the name email, well, that email cookie is no longer in here, so it's gone. Let's delete the other cookies too. Delete first name, delete last name. And those three cookies are cleared. Let's create a function to get the value of a cookie by a name. Let's declare this function, function get cookie. We'll accept a name as an argument. What we'll need to do is decode our cookie. I'll store this within a constant. Constant C for cookie decoded equals decode URI component then pass in document.cookie. Let's take a look at this. Console.log C decoded. Let's make sure we have at least two cookies. Set cookie first name SpongeBob 365 days to live. Set cookie last name. Square pants. Then I will invoke the get cookie method. Then pass in a name. First name is fine. Okay, let's see what we have. This is what's stored within C decoded. We have our name value pairs. What we'll need to do is split each of these name value pairs at each of these semicolons. That's how to separate them. So after this first statement, we'll take C decoded and split at each semicolon, semicolon space. This will return an array. We'll store that within const c array, cookie array. Let's display cookie array, console.log cookie array. Each of those name value pairs is now within separate elements. What we're going to do is for each element, we'll check to see if there's a match between each of these element names and the name that we're looking for. Let's take our cookie array, c array, and use the for each method. I'll use an arrow function expression. There is one parameter, element, arrow. What would we like to do for each element? I'll use an if statement. Let's check to see if our element at index of the name that we're looking for is equal to zero. Say that we're looking for last name. We'll iterate over each element of our array and see if there's a match. We check the first element. These don't match, but this one does. If there's a match, then let's return the result. Result equals, and we'll create a substring. Element dot substring. Name dot length plus one. The length of the name plus one will create a substring and return this text. So let's declare let result at the end return result. Actually, I'm going to set result to null. Okay, let's see if this works. So we have two cookies, and I'm going to console.log, get cookie, pass in my first name. And that first name is SpongeBob. Let's get last name, last name, SpongeBob and SquarePants. Okay, yeah, that's how to set, delete, and get cookies. Let's take this a step further. Let's create some text fields, a submit button and a get cookies button. Heading to our HTML file, let's create some text fields and some labels. Label for equals first text. First name colon, close the label, input 
ID equals first text. I'll add a line break. Let's do the same thing with last name. Last text, last name. ID is last text. I'll create a submit button. Button ID equals submit. Now let's name this BTN for short. Submit button. Text will be submit. Then a get cookies button. Cookies, BTN for button. The text will be get cookies. Okay, heading back to our JavaScript file. Let's select these elements. Const first text equals document dot query selector. We're selecting the ID of first text. Let's do the same thing with last text. Our submit button. Submit button. Then cookie button. Cookie button. I'm going to add an event listener to our submit button. Submit button dot add event listener. The event attribute will be click. When we click, we're going to perform an arrow function expression. We will set the cookies according to what these values are within these text boxes. We will invoke the set cookie function. The name will be first name. The value will be whatever's within our text boxes. First text dot value and days to live. I'll set this to be a year, 365 days. Let's do the same thing with our last name, set cookie last name, last text.value. Let's add an event listener to our cookie button that will populate the fields. That function will search for any cookies and return a value. Okay, we have cookie button, add event listener, click, first text.value equals get cookie, then the name of the cookie, first name. Do the same thing with last text. Last text dot value, get cookie, last name. Whoops, looks like I misspelled this ID. Cookie button. Now before we run this, I'm just going to delete our cookies. Delete cookie, first name. Delete cookie last name. Then save and run it. So when I press get cookies, well, we don't have any first name or last name cookies. There's nothing to populate these text fields. So I'm going to type in a first name and a last name. SpongeBob, SquarePants, press submit. This first name and last name are stored as cookies now. So I'm going to refresh this page press that get cookies button again. And that will populate these text fields with the cookies I have. So yeah, everybody, that's an introduction to cookies. They're small text files stored on your computer. They're used to remember information about the user and they're saved in name value pairs. If you would like a copy of all this code, I know there's a lot here. I'll post all of this in the comment section down below. And well, yeah, that's an introduction to cookies using JavaScript.